as an optometrist, you suspected this patient has hyperopia, then you keep giving 25 degree. So after giving the 25 degree, the patient still 66. Until 100 degree plus, the patient still have 66. So some students ask me why the patients can still have give 66 with the 100 degree lens, because these patients have their own ability to adjust it. We call that accommodations because their muscle actually works so hard. They change their lens, making the focus still focus on the retina, even you put 100 diopter lens, all right? Until what? Until plus in this 100, if you put a 25 diopter, patient said, I cannot see 66, it's become blur, all right? Then you're giving the drug, like atropine or what? Then we call the cycloplegic drug to totally dilate the pupil, rest their muscle, making the patients no adjustment, lost their combinations. Then the patient show 2.5 diopter hyperopia. So let's talk about what is manifest hyperopia. Manifest is, even this is 6.6, six. however, if you keep putting the lens until to 100, which is the maximum, let's see the, the definitions, all right? Manifest hyperopia is the maximum plus no cyclopias, the eyes can accept it without a blur of the vision. So this is the maximum, 100, right? If you ex extra, then it's blur. That means that maximum, the patients can accept it. So this is called manifest hyperopia is 100. So what is the, the latent? Latent is cycloplegias, which is 2.5. We're using this one minus maximum, then we can get into 1.5, right? So let's see the definition again. What is the latent? Latent hyperopia is cycloprendurin, give the drug, and minus maximal can accommodation. So this is a manifest hyperopia. So here is manifest hyperopia is the 100. Cycloprendurin is 2.5. So the latent is this minus this. So 2.5 minus 1 is plus 1.5, okay? Then what is the absolute? Absolute, let's see the definition. Here is zero. Absolute means the minimal plus for clear vision at a distance. So for this patient, the absolute, without anything, he can still see 6.6. Six. That means this patient's absolute hyperopia is zero. So what is the facultative hyperopia? Let's go back to see the definitions. Facultative is the maximal minus absolute. So this is part of the accommodations. So the facultative is what? This one minus this one. So it's also 100, okay? 100. Let's see the, another example. This patient are a little bit different because is the distance of vision is not a 6.6, six, it's 6.12. However, if you give 100 diopter, they can maintain the very good vision, 6.6. Six. Then you keep adding. The patients can tolerate 1.5. They can still maintain 6.6. Six. However, above this extra 1.5, if you put a 25, it's blur. And the cycle project is 3.5. So what is the manifest hyperopia? What is the latent? What is the absolute? What is the facultative? I give you two minutes to calculate. Then I go back. Let's take a Please calculate that. Okay, please calculate. Then I will come back. Two minutes, quickly. Every student think about the absolute is simple. This addition, so you will get something. This one, you will get something. And let's think. Think first, then let's go over this question again. Then give you a better impression. How do we calculate this? Actually, the key point is if you understand the definition of this, then you will easily to get this right. So, however, in the examination, a lot of people lost. <laughs> I can tell you this. If you can answer this right, a lot of students get, get A plus.
Okay, I think now is 124. Okay, let's begin. Let's say again. So the question is, MH, LH, absolutely hyperopia and the facultative hyperopia in this patient. So what is, so let's make it the simple. What is the manifest hyperopia? Manifest hyperopia, according to the definition, which is the maximum hyperopia he can tolerate, right? So the maximum he can tolerate is 1.0 plus 1.5 because a more he cannot tolerate, he will be blurred. So therefore, the manifest hyperopia, which is show up, is plus 2.5. Then the cycle project given that is 3.5. So the latent is what? Latent, according to the definition, is cycle project minus manifest. So where is 3.5 minus 2.5 should be 1.0. Then it's easy to get in the absolute hyperopia, which is the minimum he can get in the clear visions, right? So the minimum is 1.0. So what is the facultative? Facultative actually is this one, 1.5, because he can tolerate this much. Yes, maximum minus absolute, which is facultative hyperopia. So this is, is the, in the normal development. And uh, don't worry, uh, go back. I think our student, you can looking through this case make you understand how to calculate. And tomorrow we have a practice more, all right? So the normal development is because in, when we're talking about hyperopia, we are talking about amplitude at the accommodations. This amplitude accommodations decrease with age. So that is from, we have the ability, actually is a storage ability to adjustment is about 25 to 30 times very strong. When we getting old, we lost that. So therefore, when we're getting old, we cannot focus from the book to the far away. Then we need a glasses because we lost this accommodation. When we have lost this accommodation, what's increased? Absolute and the manifest will be increased, right? So this is the hyperopia. In the clinical test to determine this type, for example, manifest, we're using the maximum. Absolute and the cycle therefore you can get in the latent is C plus the M, three minus 1.5 in this patient is 1.5. Facultative is M minus A, this minus this is 100. So in the clinical, we need to calculate that and see how the patients, all right, they have how many strong of the accommodation ability still there. So totally we have one, two, and three case to let you practice the idea. What is the manifest hyperopia, which is maximum plus? What is absolute, all right? So there you can practice when you go home. So in this lecture and the next lecture, definitely I need my student go home to see, spend about not too much time, maybe five or 10 minutes to think about these calculations because that will be extremely important, all right? So I stop here a little bit. Let's wait, uh, take a five minute break. I think some student need a, uh, uh, want to to think about this more. So five minutes. Let's coming back one thirty three. Yeah, one more thing about the last time uh, the, I put the video one or video two for the lecture one or two. Uh, actually, the lecture two is quite is similar to the video one, uh, lecture one. Thanks to our students to let me know. I already up, updated. So if you need to go over these lectures, uh, I think everything is right now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me know if there was any problem, all right? If I uploading something wrong or think it's not clear, uh, let me know. I do my best to to make it work. Okay, um, do you want one more minute? Or we can begin early, then we can leave early. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, uh, then, then uh, let's begin. Uh, because the today's lecture is about amitropia, so please pay attention. The last part I talking about the myopian hyperopia, so it's very important, especially the hyperopia. How do you calculate the different? Okay, manifester absolute latent this way. The only way to understand this is to look in the three case I just gave. For sure, you will see this in the exam. Okay, and uh, let's begin. Then I'm going to switch to the to the full screen model. 